Hi, Kevin here. Today we're fixing some luxuriously soft dinner rolls. And I made the same rolls last night. As you can see, I've eaten quite a few of them. And believe me, they are delicious. So here's the recipe. Now the first ingredient we need is one cup of warm milk. This is around 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Pour it into the bowl. And by the way, it's the milk that makes the rolls super soft. Then add two and a quarter teaspoons of either active dry or instant yeast. I'm using instant yeast today. I've noticed that instant yeast does not work any better or any faster than active dry. So if you only have active dry yeast on hand, no problem. Then I'm going to add two tablespoons of regular granulated sugar. And then stir those ingredients together quickly. And then add one large beaten egg. And a quarter cup of softened butter. And I cut the butter, I diced up the butter just to help it to soften quickly. Let me get all of that in here. The butter is going to give the, let me get this butter off of here. The butter is going to give the rolls a nice richness. Stir it in. Let's see, did I forget anything? Yes. Need some salt. One teaspoon of salt. All right. Mix. And then we're going to add three cups of flour, one cup at a time. And here's how I, I wanted to show you how I measure flour. So can you see? Yes, you can. So I take a knife. First, I measure out the flour in my measuring cup, and then I scrape off the excess with a knife. In it goes, one cup, and then we're going to stir that in. Then add another cup. I should probably move the camera a little higher so you can see me dramatically sweeping the excess flour off the top of the measuring cup. Lord knows it's an Academy Award winning performance. So I'm going to move you up just a little bit. Scoop the flour, sweep off the excess. There, and then we're going to stir. Oh, I wish I had a better camera, but I do not. Hi, Tiger. Tiger wishes I had a better camera, too. Tiger is commiserating. Okay, and now you just stir until the dough is too stiff to stir. And then, take your knife, clean off the spatula. Yes, tiger. We all want to listen to you today. Then, Let me readjust things so I can move my stand mixer in view. All right, so we're going to use the dough hook on the mixer to knead the dough just until it cleans the bowl. That's going to take four to five minutes. We're going to do this at medium speed.
Welcome back. All right, when the dough feels smooth and elastic, as mine does, go ahead and scrape the dough off the dough hook. Hi, Tiger. Yeah, you know, Tiger lives in a very large house, but the only room she wants to hang out in is this one, the kitchen, especially when I'm filming videos. Not sure why she does that. Anyway, now roll up your sleeves, and we're going to scrape the dough. I'm looking for my other spatula. Where did it go? Hold on. I put my spatula in the dishwasher. I'm like super efficient. Okay, now we're going to scrape this dough onto a non-floured work surface, which for me is a marble board. And a lot of people have asked, where do you find a mar marble board? And I found mine in a kitchen supply store. It was not at all expensive. And I've seen the same board in, well, just about every kitchen supply store I've visited. And believe me, I've been to a lot of kitchen supply stores. Okay, this out of the way. Now we're going to, as I said, knead this by hand. Just a little bit. Oh, this dough is in pretty good condition already. When you need, fold the dough over on itself and press out with the heel of your hand. And you just press gently. You can do this whole job with just one hand and keep the other hand clean. This is a beautiful dough. the dough by pulling out a small section like this and if it tears easily we know we have to keep kneading but this is not tearing at all and look how far I've pulled it it's, yeah it's nice and stretchy so this dough is ready so then grab a clean bowl and grease it just lightly, I'm using vegetable spray. Put the dough in the bowl, flip to grease the other side, and then cover it with cling film. And then this goes into a warmish location until the dough has doubled in volume. That's going to take about 90 minutes so welcome back. All right, the dough has doubled in volume, so now it's time to deflate the dough and then form it into rolls. Down you go. Okay, then back onto the work surface. Now we have to form this dough into Oh, I guess like a log shape. And then we need to cut it into the number of rolls we want. And I am looking to make, oh, about 15 or 16 rolls. So first up, cut this sucker in half. One on the side. Then cut this into, let's see, one. Two, three, okay, I've got four here, and I'm going to cut each of these in half. So that will give me eight. And you don't have to be exact. These are homemade rolls. I mean, if you want to weigh them on a scale, you can, but again, homemade. So I have eight, nine, let's see, eight, nine, 
10, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. It will go like this. Okay. Then you need a buttered or vegetable sprayed uh, baking dish. I'm going to use my 9 by 13 casserole dish here to hold the rolls. And now to form the rolls. What you do is take the piece of dough, you move you in a little closer, and pull the ends underneath so that you have a smooth surface. And then just pinch the bottom. I'm putting that in my casserole dish. I'll do another one for you. Take a piece of dough. Actually, this one's kind of large. Well, so we'll have a large roll. Pull the ends underneath. We're creating surface tension here. And if you want a super smooth top, you put the roll on your unfloured work surface and form, cup your hand like this and rotate the ball of dough. You have a perfect roll shape. I'll do another one for you. Actually, I love forming rolls. It's probably obvious by now. Okay, pinch the ends under. Roll. Perfection! Okay, I'm going to finish forming my rolls, and I am, as I said, I'm putting them in this 9 by 13 dish. And when I'm finish forming all of the rolls, I'll come back. Okay, so I have 15 rolls in this pan. Some rolls are larger than others, but that's okay. People who want a small roll can have a small roll. People like me who want a big roll can have a big roll. And now I'm just brushing the tops with a little melted butter. And at this time, I'd like to share a little cooking gadget rant. I really wish someone would invent a pastry brush with bristles that don't fall out. I have silicone pastry brushes, and of course these bristles don't fall out, but they also don't hold things like melted butter, so they're not great to use. The bristle brushes are good. And if you have a bristle brush, a bristle pastry brush, I should say, that uh, works really well for you, please mention it in the comment section below. I will definitely order the thing. All right, done. Now, I'm going to cover these with plastic or cling film. And I'm going to cover them just very, very loosely. Because I want the rolls to rise and I don't want the um, well, I want the rolls to rise, but I don't want the rolls to stick to the... Uh, I don't want to have trouble. I'm having trouble talking today, apparently. Probably I'm having trouble thinking. Uh, anyway, just cover the rolls loosely with plastic, okay? And then put them in the warm location and let them double in volume. And this is going to take, oh, 30 to 45 minutes. So we'll come... Oh, and... Midway through the rising time, preheat your oven, preheat your oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, see you shortly. All right, the rolls are definitely doubled in volume. So now these go into the preheated 350 degree oven for 15 to 20 minutes. 
The tops should just barely color. And I'll come back when these are done. All right, here are the rolls. All puffed and just slightly browned at the top. You don't want to over brown them. And then, I hate to do this to you, but we have to butter them while they're hot. That's right, more butter. Yay! Ooh. Oh, I can hear the rolls absorbing all of this wonderful butter. Well, this is certainly a special treat. You might like to serve these rolls, oh, for Christmas or some other special occasion. Although they're certainly easy enough to make for every day. Okay, and then as a finishing touch, and this is entirely up to you, you can top them off with some coarse sea salt. I'm using Malden sea salt. Because remember, there was only one teaspoon of salt in the dough. And I'm not using much of the Malden at all. Okay, I'm going to let these cool just briefly and then we can tear into one. Okay, let's cut into one of these rolls. These are actually like pull-apart rolls. Me being me, I'm taking one of the larger rolls. Oh. I have to give you a close-up. Look at this. It's a very pretty roll. And now, I also want to give you a close-up of the texture. So I'm going to do this. Just going to pull a roll apart. Look at that. So these are really light and fluffy. They're also baking for more butter, believe it or not. Fortunately, I have some melted butter left. And a quick taste. I already know they're great. So soft. Really wonderful, guys. So, I hope you'll give these wonderful, soft dinner rolls a try. I will post the list of ingredients in the description box below. And then, when I, when I have time, I'm going to post the printable recipe over on my website, and I will link that below. So, yeah, give the rolls a try and let me know how they work out for you. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already and tap the little bell icon to receive notifications. And please post a comment below. Again, I read all of your comments and I really love hearing from you. Okay, thanks so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye-bye.